Okay, uh, I'll call the Drainage District Board of Directors meetings to order. I have a roll call, please. Eddie Cantu, Precinct 2. Joe Flores, Precinct 3. Ellie Torres, Precinct 4. Richard Cortez, County Judge, that constitutes a quorum. Mr. Sassin, would you please lead us in prayer? Yes, sir. Certainly will, sir. Thank you. Let us pray. Father God, again, we uh, come to you today just to give you thanks for another day that you've given us to serve, Lord. We continue to pray uh, for our leadership, Lord. Continue to lift up the judge and the four commissioners that you've appointed to lead this great county of ours, Lord. We continue to pray for your wisdom, Lord, upon them for your guidance and all that they do, Lord. More importantly, your peace as they continue to make the decisions that affect us all, Lord. Not just for them, for their families, all those around us, Lord. Continue to ask for your blessings for, for our whole county, Lord, all our workers. May we just continue to work as we're working for you, Lord. And as we uh, proclaim October... Um, Cancer Awareness Month, Lord, we, we lift up all those that uh, have battled cancer, that have survived, and those that have not, Lord. We lift up their families as well, Lord, to watch over them uh, and give them the comfort that comes through your son, Lord. Again, uh, we give you thanks for another day that you, ask, you know, allow us to serve, Lord, and ask for this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Do we have anybody sign up for open forum? Yes, sir, we do have two participants. I will remind the audience, to, or I will inform the audience, to please respect the speaker's time at the podium. There's a three-minute time lim limit, and I will advise whether there's one minute left. Our first uh, speaker is uh, Mr. Marco Lopez. I know this has nothing to do with the agenda, but I was asked to come and invite y'all or continue to invite y'all to the gala that we're going to have at Lupe. Um, I think Thursday's the deadline if you guys are trying to get a table. I mean, I don't know if you guys have been there before. We're having a Paul Chavez, um, Cesar Chavez's um, grandson. Uh, coming to speak, and we're going to be um, recognizing one of our community members named uh, Rebecca Flores that was in the movement since the UFW. So we're inviting guys. Hope you guys can come out. It could be this Friday. Thank you. Next presenter is Eliborio, Mr. Sanchez, Eliborio Sanchez. <coughs> Buenos días, me llamo Liborio Sánchez, soy de la colonia El Flaco Chiquito. Hoy vine a dar las gracias por el esfuerzo que han hecho para que la, la agua de la lluvia se vaya bien. También hace que las buscan, buscan bonitas nuestras colonias. Muchas gracias, yo Flores, Precinto 3. Someone please translate. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Eliborio Sanchez, and I am from Colonia Flaco Chiquito. I'm here to, give, to thank you for your support and help for all you have done for the water from the rains and the trash. Uh, you, you are making our, col our colonias look nice. Again, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jose Flores from prison number three. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Next. <clears throat> Next item is the approval of the consent agenda. Yes, sir, Judge. Uh, we just have uh, our no more uh, operation items. Uh, we do have some discharge permits for various subdivisions as well. And then we have some uh, general operation extension of some contracts uh, while we award the current contract and then also um, some bond 2020, uh, 2012 and 2018 uh, payments to uh, regarding uh, to consultant engineers. So everything's in order. We recommend approval. Some okay. approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Item 5A. Requesting approval to submit an environmental narrative and funding grant application to U.S. Department of Commerce Economic Development Administration for the fiscal year 2019 disaster supplemental notice of funding opportunity with funding match for the purchase and installation of two vertical pumps for West Coast Commerce drainage area basin within Hidalgo County Precinct 1 approval of the drainage district general manager to execute application in any subsequent forms. This is just uh, monies that are available. 587 million are, were made available nationwide, 50 million for our area in Texas, so uh, we uh, are seeking application for two pump structures that IBWC would ties into. Um, job retention is really the key here that they're trying to, job creation, job retention, and since floods and all that obviously take away from the opportunity to retain jobs and keep them going, uh, we feel that we can qualify under that. We're going to pursue it and see what we can, uh, and then 
it's 80 percent, up to an 80 percent uh, funding, so it would be a 2080 match, and we would use some of the bond monies that we have in precinct one to, to, to match the, the cost there. So, so moved, second. Motion in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Item B, request and approval to complete and submit the attached credit application document required by Briggs Equipment, including authority for general manager for, or his SNE to execute document. So mm -hmm. for approval. Second. For rental, additional rental needs. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Uh, 2018 bond referendum projects, request and approval to local cooperation with Dow County Irrigation District 16. As it relates to maintenance of PD lateral subject final legal review, we've, we've met with the irrigation district. Uh, they have one of their main drains uh, or one of their main canals along Iowa Road in the western portion of our county. Uh, they're receptive and partnering with us to, similar to what we've done in other areas of the county, clean the system and then maintain it to, uh, to manage drainage in that area. So we're recommending an approval. Approval. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? The motion carries. So just under 2018 bond referendum projects, we do have uh, you know, just general comment uh, next Thursday. Uh, excuse me, uh, the yeah, 17th, we have our our uh, our meeting. We're going to have our update meeting with the uh, drainage advisory committee. Uh, the invitations have gone out to the committee and to the board members as well. And, um, public's welcome to attend. Uh, it's going to be from 11. What time? 11:30 to 1:30 to here. In, in the commissioner's courtroom. So uh, we're just going to update uh, the public or update the committee and the uh, public as well on, on the status of all our bond projects. And all the information will be made available via the website as well. There we go. Okay? Sounds good. Do we have any? I don't think we have Both any executive items. items. No, we do not, sir. Okay. Well, I believe that concludes our agenda items. I have a motion you. to adjourn. So moved. Again. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed? The motion carries. We'll be back at uh, 10 o'clock. Call the Cadawa County Commissioner's Court meeting to order. May I start with a roll call, please? David Fuentes, Precinct 1. Eddie Gunther, Precinct 2. Joseph Rodas, Precinct 3. Ellie Torres, Precinct 4. Richard Cortez, County Judge, that constitutes a quorum. Today, we're very proud to have, as, as we always do, a Pledge of Allegiance led by one of our veterans, and today we are honored to have Sergeant Abel Silva, United States Army, retired, leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Sergeant Silva served in the U.S. Army from 1968 to 1970 and is a Vietnam veteran. Mr. Silva is a former bailiff. He retired from the Hidalgo County Auxiliary Court in 2015 and is a retired federal agent. Sergeant, thank you for your service. You're right. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the democracy alive in our country and for the freedom to worship you. Help the elected government and all in positions of power and authority to govern wisely and for the com common good of all. Amen. 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 As you know, we all are approaching flu season and there's always this flu shot. And uh, we have a wellness program that's being led by Commissioner Contu here. So wellness is very important to us. So they needed a guinea pig for the first shot, so I volunteered. So let me take it. So Judge, Commissioners, thank you. We have Ms. Nelda Mendez, our coordinator for immunization. She'll be the one administering the flu shot. Uh, please take a seat. It's important that the community understand that over 25,000 people a year will die from flu-related uh, deaths. So it's important that we get a flu shot. And Nelda's very good at it, actually. She gave me mine. Judge, it's not on the arm. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> you still good, brother? <laughs> Get him a donut.
I didn't do mine. <laughs> I would have already fainted. No. no. Need a sticker in the lollipop. I hate needles. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I didn't even do that. <laughs> She's very good. She's very, no, she really is. So, Judge Commissioners, we encourage everyone in the community who follow through, get their flu shots. They can get in contact with the health department at 383-6221 for any questions regarding your flu shot. Talk to your doctors. Talk to the local pharmacists. We're all here to help. Please prevent the flu. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Before we go into the consent agenda, let's go ahead and go to item 5A, the resolution honoring Shan Rankin. Judge Commissioners, Julia Sullivan with Public Affairs. Um, item 5A, under Hidalgo County Judge Richard Cortez, is a resolution in honor of um, Shan Rankin. Whereas Shan Rankin has served as Executive Director of the Museum of South Texas History since 1989, when it was still known as the Hidalgo County Historical Museum. And whereas during her tenure, the museum served thousands of visitors and local citizens completed multiple expansions and changed its name to the Museum of South Texas History to better reflect its mission to preserve and present the borderland heritage of South Texas and Northeastern Mexico. And whereas her many accomplishments include securing accreditation by the American Alliance of Museums and the successful renovation of the 1910 Hidalgo County Jail, which continues to be one of the most important sections of the museum. And whereas a native of Raymond Mill, Ms. Rankin received a BA in political science and history with an emphasis on Latin American affairs and an MBA from Southern Methodist University. And she lived and studied in Spain while doing graduate work. And whereas prior to becoming affiliated with the museum, she served on the staff of, the U of US Senator John Tower and was appointed by Governor William Perry Clements to the Texas Women's Commission and to the Board of Regents of Pan American University. And whereas Ms. Rankin has served as an appointed member of the Hidalgo County Historical Commission, board member of the Texas Hall of Fame Foundation, and board member of Los Caminos del Rio, Inc., and she currently serves on the Texas Historical Commission's Texas Preservation Trust Fund Advisory Board. And whereas after serving the museum with distinction, integrity, and passion, Ms. Rankin has handed over the reins to new leadership. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court does hereby honor Shan Rankin for 30 years of outstanding, dedicated, and committed service to the Museum of South Texas History and wishes her continued success. Move we'll up rule. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 You want to vote? Motion carries. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm, I'm really honored to be up here like so many people have been before me. And um, I just want to really say a deep, heartfelt thank you to each of you, to the people of the county, for the partnership they've had with the museum since its inception. You have been our strongest ally in our big projects. The museum would not be what it is today without you all. I hope that support will continue. I um, am thrilled w with my successor, Francisco Guajardo, and I hope you all will get to know him well. Um, and I want to say before I leave, I, I just especially want to commend the commission for keeping on its staff the wonderful professional people that I've been able to work with. I, Valde and I have had many discussion. I know I've been a fly in the ointment for him for <laughs> oftentimes. <laughs> but he has dealt with me cheerfully, professionally, 
Monica has just been fabulous about the way she takes care of me when I need something. Um, Daniel has helped us with our plant things that we needed. So I just, um, I thank you for everything you've done to make my time at the museum such a special time and such a wonderful opportunity for the museum to grow. So thank you. Congratulations. Well. Dr. Guajardo and staff can go ahead and join join them now. We'll take another photo. Next, we have a proclamation declaring October as a Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Good morning again. Item 5B, under County Judge Richard Cortez, is a proclamation declaring October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Whereas the citizens of Hidalgo County value the benefits of good health as a vital component of a long, productive, and fulfilling life, and proudly support observances that focus public attention on crucial health issues, such as breast cancer awareness. And whereas breast cancer is the most prevalent cancer and the second most common cause of cancer-related death among Texas women. Breast cancer does not only affect women, though. About one in 1,000 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer in his lifetime. And whereas, while there are factors known to increase the risk of developing breast cancer, nearly 80% of women diagnosed do not exhibit any of the detriment factors, determinant factors, excuse me. Early detection and signs uh, of signs and symptoms of breast cancer can increase the survival rate by nearly 95%. And whereas a mammogram, the screening test for breast cancer, can help find breast cancer early when it's easier to treat. And whereas this month, as we honor those whose lives were tragically cut short by breast cancer, let us arm ourselves with the best knowledge, tools, and resources available to fight this devastating disease. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby proclaims the month of October 2019 as Breast Cancer Awareness Month in Hidalgo County and encourages residents, businesses, nonprofit organizations, and all other interested groups to join in activities that will increase awareness and commitment to the promise of finding a cure. Motion for rule. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Good. And we've got Mario Lascano to introduce his, his group and say a few words. 
Thank you so much, and uh, honorable judge and county commissioners, we thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to always uh, be in front of you and allowing us to pass this message on of not only prevention but awareness. It is important for us at DHL Health to continue our efforts along with all our health systems to ensure that the community does have uh, those resources that are available for our loved ones. And the, uh, today I'm joined with the, some of our team from DHR and also want to thank all of our uh, county commissioners who all wore pink and also the staff members that are also joining us from the county that are here in support of it. Uh, with me I have Elizabeth Ramirez, the Advanced Care Center Administrator, Evelyn Science, the Renaissance Cancer Foundation Director of Operations, Ms. Vicky Ocañas and Ms. Pamela Bruce, which are both nurse navigators at, at the Advanced Care Center, uh, Ms. Christy Esparza Perez, which is a volunteer service manager, and Ms. Genesis Cavazos, our volunteer services coordinator. Uh, simp I want to go ahead and share the facts with you that one out of eight of our women are, re are receiving cancer. 47% can be saved if we do the screening. And it's important for us that, yes, we have the largest population of, of cancer survivors in the United States, but that's because of efforts like you all here today. We, we cordially invite you all to our Breast Cancer Awareness Walk for Cure. That, that'll take place uh, October 16th on our campus at 6 p.m. And we ask that each and every one of you today um, continue to honor our cancer fire, our, sorry, our cancer fighters, our survivors, and those who lost their lives during the battle. And, and it's important today that I shared with each one in the audience a little pin. And we're, we're sharing that pin so that you can be empowered today and yet you can share that message that we can help with this disease. And we will be here uh, every single month if we need to, to continue our dedication to our community. We thank you so much and we ask you to please continue to pray for our health care providers. Thank you. Fine. We're fine. We moved. Yeah. We're good. We're good. You're always wearing <laughs> The next item is a resolution in recognition of elect elections administrator Ivan Ramon. 
Judge Commissioners, we have um, Hilda Salinas from uh, the Elections Department, the uh, Assistant Elections Administrator, uh, who will read the resolution. Good morning, Judge and Commissioners. Resolution, resolution honoring Yvonne Ramon for being elected president of the Texas Association of Elections Administrators Board of Directors. Whereas McAllen native Yvonne Ramon is being recognized for being elected president of the Texas Association of Elections Administrators, TAEA, during the 37th Annual Election Law Seminar held in Austin, Texas. And whereas Ms. Ramon has been married, wait, okay, <laughs> we'll just go ahead and continue has been married to her husband, John Ramon, for the past 45 years and together have three wonderful children, Laura, Gilbert, Robert, as well as three beautiful granddaughters and one precious grandson. And whereas Ms. Ramon was appointed as elections administrator of the Hidalgo County in 2008 and before her appointment was an administrator and teacher for the McAllen Independent School District. And whereas her love of learning compelled her to obtain her Master's of Education in Leadership and Administration through the University of Texas Pan American. Ms. Ramon also earned two specialty certifications that focused on voter registration and elections administration. A national certification called the, Certi the Certified Elections Registration Administrator, SARA, and a State of Texas certification called the Registered Elections Official, REO. And whereas Ms. Ramon has been a member of the TAEA for the past 11 years, and before becoming president, she was elected as secretary and then continued to serve treasurer and vice president. As president, she will oversee the TAEA membership, which consists of 350 elections administrators and election staff who represent each of the 254 counties in the state of Texas. And whereas, as president of the TAEA, she will also oversee the election knowledge and experience to promote efficient in integration of voter registration functions with the actual conduct of elections and ensure that voter registration, voting, and vote tabulation are all carried out in accordance with the highest legal and ethical standards. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby recognizes and honors Ivan Ramon for being elected president of the Texas Association of Elections Administrators and commends her for her continuous hard work and dedication to the Elections Department. Voters of Hidalgo County and the state of Texas approve this eighth day of October 2019. Move for approval. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. This is an honor to be standing here today, not only because I've uh, represented the County of Hidalgo for now going on almost 12 years, and, uh, and now I get to also be representative of, of the Texas Association of Elections Administrators, which is all 254 counties. So it's an honor to be here, but of course I would not be able to, to do this challenging job every day if it were not for my family, who you see standing around me. My son Gilbert lives in Atlanta. And, uh, and, and my other grandchildren, but also a wonderful staff. They are so hardworking, they're so dedicated, and I would not be able to come every day to work without them as well. It also merits to, to mention the Commissioner's Court because without each and every one of you supporting what we do and understanding the challenges that come with elections, we would not be able to be as successful as we have been. So thank you to each of you as well. So thank you for this honor. It, uh, Every day is, is, I tell my staff, if I don't walk in with a smile, then it's time for me not to walk in. And every day I, I still come in with a smile. I also would like to just say thank you to Mr. Valdeguerra, to the district attorney's office, to facilities management, Daniel, to treasurers, to the auditors, to uh, Marty in, in purchasing, and everyone else that uh, lends a hand to do everything that we do. It takes the entire county of Hidalgo to do what we do and to be successful. So thank you to everyone. If I didn't mention everyone, it's because there's too many to mention. So thank you for this. Thank you.
Okay, we've got a trophy to present. May I ask for Frank Espadasov, he's here to come on up? Okay. Judge Commissioners, item 5D is a traveling, traveling trophy presentation for the talent RGV regarding its second annual friendly Battle of the Precincts blood drive competition. Oh. And, and here to say a few words is Frank Espadasov, the, uh, the talent RGV center director. <laughs> Oh, is that a time? I didn't even know. Uh, George Cortez, uh, commissioners, um, I am not Frank Esparza. Uh, my name is Rick Hinojosa. I apologize. Frank uh, had a personal um, issue to deal with, so I'm here today to present on his behalf. I would just like to thank the commissioner's court and judge for having the opportunity to come up here and speak. Uh, I represent Vitalent, uh, one of the blood providers here in the Rio Grande Valley. We provide over 175 blood products to our, all of our area hospitals here. Uh, and your support in that endeavor is very much appreciated. Um, over the course of two months, in August and September, uh, precincts one, two, and three um, hosted blood drives. And uh, precinct three and precinct two uh, and precinct one all brought in over 70 blood products for all of our area hospitals and we just want to say thank you for all of that. Thank you very much. Uh, but as it was said before, there can only be one winner. <laughs> and this year, for the second year in a row, I'd like to present this trophy to Mr. David Fuentes from Precinct 1 uh, and for winning the contest. So thank you very much, Commissioner, for your support. I thought the color purple. Yeah. Got I mean, it. It's, <laughs> got it. it's, it's fitting. It's fitting. It's fitting. <laughs> If my staff is listening, we lost by one. Uh. <laughs> you have two arms. I put it right Is it big enough? <laughs> Don't block the commissioners. Before we go into the next one, I want to move uh, item 14A. Up. Good morning, Judge Commissioners. Eddie Olivares, Dallas County Health. We're very excited today, sir, here to item 14A is the recognition of Hidalgo County EMS and MedCare EMS for the efforts to improve the quality of care for the STEMI and acute coronary syndrome. Through our Texas Healthy Communities Grant, they actually got awarded the first in the Rio Grande Valley to be part of this program for the whole purpose of our EMS 911 contractors and EMS programs is to save lives and to encourage that if a person's having a heart attack or a stroke, that they treat them at advanced levels to get them there safely so they have a higher incidence of recovery. And they were recognized, again, a grant that Mr. Salinas oversees at our office through our Texas, uh, Texas Communities, uh, Healthy Communities Grant, which actually, this grant comes to end of life, but we're still being recognized for the effort put forth in this grant. And we like to recognize today we have uh, Mr. Mark, Matt Gilbert and Veronica on, 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 Ontiveros. Ontiveros, sorry, uh, from uh, MedCare. And then we have uh, Mr. Paul Vasaldo, I'm not sure Paul's here. 
and Mr. Or, and Mr. Ponce, the owner of Hidalgo EMS. But we'll let uh, Veronica and Mac give give a quick overview before we present them with their plaque. Good morning, Commissioner's Court. We're very happy to be here receiving the award on behalf of Medicare EMS, and we're very happy to service the communities here in Hidalgo County. Um, we usually see people on the worst day of their lives, so in this business, we don't get too many. Uh, recognitions or compliments, but we, we do our best 24-7 and we're here for our community. I think Mac has a few words. Yes, thank you. <clears throat> I'd like to thank uh, Eddie and, and Mr. Salinas, the American Heart Association. Um, the Mission Lifeline EMS program allows us to do something special. We've been collecting data at Medicare on this particular uh, topic since 2010. We finally have an avenue to share that. Uh, with the American Heart Association, with the county, with our hospital-based providers. And this will allow us uh, to share evidence-based metrics uh, to measure and improve the systems of performance. There are four keys that, that we identify uh, through this program. Uh, one is early 12 lead acquisition. Uh, one is early STEMI recognition. Uh, one is early emergency department notification. Uh, STEMI is basically another term for heart attack. <laughs> Sorry, commissioners. Uh, and then early cath lab activation so that we can regain timely perfusion, not just to save your life, but possibly improve the quality of your life moving forward. So I really thank, thank the commissioner's court, thank the health department, Eddie, Mr. Salinas, thank the American Heart Association. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. So I'm not sure Mr. Mr. Vasaldoas here, but the, re the reality is, this is how Hidalgo County Health Human Services, with our community partners, with the partners from Commissioner's Court and our nine uh, emergency uh, districts, are all working together to improve the quality of life and the, and the survivability of advanced cardiac illness and response. And really, this is some very advanced technology working hand in hand with the, our ER rooms. And they have been presented with this award, sir. It's that I would like, with your permission, to be able to take a photo of the group and them getting this award. And on behalf of Hidalgo County Health Human Services and Commissioner's Court, congratulations. Okay, we've got a guy that knows how to cook some barbecue. Thank you, Judge. We're going to move item 12A. 12? It's 21. Or 20A, excuse me. Good morning again. Item 20A under Precinct 1 Commissioner David Fuentes is a resolution honoring barbecue champ Fred Robles. Whereas Fred Robles, owner of Rio Valley Meat, recently won the 40th American Royal World Series of Barbecue held September 12th through the 15th at Kansas Speedway in Kansas City. And whereas for, for over 100 years, the American Royal has continued to offer opportunities for scholarships, education, and competition to youth and adults. This year, 
the 40th American Royal World Series of Barbecue, a world championship competition, included 39 states represented and 10 different country participants and a grand champion winning prize of $15,000. And whereas, as a Westlaco native, Robles is the second person in Texas to prove his position of Texas preparing, cooking, and serving the best barbecue. He was also named 2017's World Barbecue Champion at the 2017 World Food Championships in Orange Beach, Alabama. The November multi-day culinary competition was sponsored by Western Premium Barbecue Products and Cowboy Charcoal. Robles took home a $10,000 prize for that win. And whereas Mr. Robles has gone competitive with his grilling skills and team for the past six years, while not only winning several competitions around the country, but also together with his wife, Yari Robles, generously giving back to their community. And whereas last year, Robles donated $8,500 to Estrella's House, a childhood advocacy center in Edinburgh. With the considerate help of his sponsors, Big Papa Smokers and Smithfield, the more Mr. Robles wins throughout the year, the more money the Robles family is able to donate. So now therefore be it resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court does hereby congratulate Fred Robles for winning the 40th American Royal World Series of Barbecue Competition in Kansas City, presented this eighth day of October 2019. Well, for Opposed in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carried. Um, what an honor it is to be up here. Thank you, Commissioner Fuentes, the uh, rest of the commissioners, Judge. Thank you very much. Um, uh, barbecue to me started as a uh, as something you know my dad would do when when I was young he'd burn chicken leg quarters and you know, <laughs> burn burn some food on the web or on the grill or whatever and and it's led to a to a passion for me you know it's and it's it's not so much just the the cooking of the barbecue but it's the friendships you garner along the way uh traveling the country i mean we've cooked from from Virginia to California and everywhere in between um so it's uh, it's very humbling and very honoring uh to be able to have won the American world the biggest competition in the world um so uh, I'm thankful um, for, for this privilege uh, to be honored. Um, and, and, and like I was telling a, a, a bunch of my friends, this is a real deal right here. My wife is, a, is the backbone of the team. And uh, without her, I couldn't, I couldn't do any of this. So thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you for making me a great, great barbecue. Backyard barbecue. Thank you for making me a great barbecue. Backyard barbecue. Thank you for giving back. Absolutely. Okay, I see some troopers out there, so let's go to item 21A. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Belinda Reyes, Precinct 4. Item 21A has two parts, part one and part two. Part one, hold a public meeting to consider public comment to rename a portion of 10th Street, a dedicated public street from North Junior Street to the South Property Line of Lots 2 and 3, Sections 235 of the Texas Mexican Railway Company Survey, as requested by retired Texas Department of Public Safety Trooper Johnny Hernandez and the City of Edinburgh. Okay, I hereby call the public hearing to order to listen to any public comments for the renaming of the portion of 10th Street, which is located north of uh, 10th Street in McAllen into, into Edinburgh. Is anyone here to address this regarding this matter? Hearing none, I close the public hearing. Item two, 
authorization and approval to change the legal name of a dedicated public street located within sections 238 and 235 of the Texas Mexican Railway Company Survey, Hidalgo County, Texas, and pursuant to chapter 251.013 of the Texas Transportation Code as follows. The portion of 10th Street between North Junior Street to the south property line of both, both two and three sections 235 Texas Mexican Railway Company Survey shall be renamed to Trooper Moises Sanchez Boulevard. Second. We have a motion and a second for approval. Those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. May I move that up? Item 21B. Item 21B? Yes, sir. So item 21B is IA 72659, resolution in support of the renaming of the portion of 10th Street to Trooper Moises Sanchez Boulevard, and I will read the resolution. Whereas a plat recorded in the Hidalgo County Real Property Records on August 30th, 1913, which subdivides two specified parcels of land, provides an explicit dedication for public use of all streets within the specified subdivided properties. And whereas a road named by this plat as 10th Street is included among those roads that has been explicitly dedicated to use by the public through that dedication and whereas Trooper Moises Sanchez served proudly and honorably serving his country in the United States Marine Corps from 1989 to 1991, and whereas Trooper Moises Sanchez paid the ultimate sacrifice when he was killed in the line of duty while protecting the citizens of Hidalgo County on August 24, 2019, as a result of injuries sustained on April 6, 2019, and whereas the County of Hidalgo has received a request from retired Texas Department of Public Safety Trooper Johnny Hernandez and the City of Edinburgh to change the name of that portion of 10th Street from North Junior Street to FM 1925 to Trooper Moises Sanchez Boulevard. And whereas Texas Transportation Code 251.013 permits the Commissioner's Court of a County to enter an order adopting a name for a public road after holding a public hearing and providing notice of such a hearing and whereas a commissioner's court held a hearing on this day after providing the public with at least two weeks of notice before the date of this hearing, and whereas after holding this hearing, the commissioner's court are of the opinion that the name of this portion of the public street should be changed to honor State Trooper Moises Sanchez. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Hidalgo County Commissioner's Court hereby supports renaming portion of 10th Street from North Junior Street to 1925 to Trooper Moises Sanchez Boulevard in honor of fallen Texas Department of Public Safety State Trooper Moises Sanchez. Today I have his son, Zach Sanchez, here, and uh, obviously his comrades from the DPS. Okay. Motion to approve the resolution. Second. second. We have a motion and second to approve the resolution. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. biggest things, you know, coming back down to the valley, of course, everything's difficult, but at the same time, um, people want to know the story. Um, from most of the time, you know, they're, they're very respectful, but sometimes it just it comes down, they just, you know, they get excited when they see us and when they see us um, back down here in the valley and they want to know how we're doing and they want to, and whether it's friends or family, other troopers, other law enforcement people, or sometimes people who pull me aside just in public, they'll, they'll want to know how we're doing and then, of course, a little bit about him. And one of the things I tell when it comes to telling the story of my father is always how big he impacted the community. And you all giving the support for this renaming of the street and going another the extra mile to go ahead and give support not only to my family but also to his legacy and his honor go it goes to show what our community can go ahead and do just from day one we already were seeing the support from coming from people that didn't even know us to to you all so i want to thank you all for this opportunity and this honor to go ahead and be here 
and God bless you all. Thank you. God bless. I promise I won't leave anything out. Uh, we're going to go now to the approval of the consent agenda. Judge commissioners, with your permission, uh, I'd like to pull from consent agenda, uh, consent agenda item 3L, 10B, and 11H. Move for approval without those items. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed. Motion carries. Judge commissioners, for the record, at consent agenda item 3L, Commissioner Torres abstains from any discussion and or action. In fact, they have uh, action on that item. Move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Everyone opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Let the record show that Commissioner Torres abstained from, uh, from voting. Uh, Judge Commissioners, consent agenda item 10B. For the record, Commissioner Fuentes abstains from any discussion and or action. Judge Commissioners, if I could have uh, action on Move the approval. Rule. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Let the record show that Commissioner Fuentes abstained from voting. And Judge Commissioners, consent agenda, consent agenda item 11H, there is no action to be taken today. Okay. We'll move into uh, 5E, presentation of the annual report of uh, VIDA. <clears throat> Good morning, Judge Cortez. Good morning, Commissioners. My name is Priscilla Alvarez. I'm the Executive Director for VIDA, the Valley Initiative for Development and Advancement. I believe you're all familiar with our organization and the work that we do. After 24 years, our model has not changed. We continue to assist economically disadvantaged adults as they obtain post-secondary credentials in a demand occupation. In your packet, you have a one-page summary of the work done for this fiscal year. The benchmark to serve for this fiscal year was to serve 34 Hidalgo County residents. Um, as a result, we were able to serve 134 with a persistence rate of 86%. 57% of the students that we have served is, uh, are in allied health, I'm sorry. 6% are in business, 20% in educational social services, 13% in specialized trades, STEM 1% and technology 2%. 55% of those individuals are between the age of 25 and 50 and that's really that hard to serve population but they do tend to stay, to stay in the valley once they graduate. 71% are female with 99% of them unemployed or low income or on public assistance. 33% of our students in Hidalgo County are single parents with 42% of them having two or more dependent children living in the household. <clears throat> uh, 
On the credential analysis, as you can see, 26% of our graduates are earning certificates, which are usually about a one-year program at the community college, with 64% earning associate's degrees and 10% with uh, earning a grad uh, bachelor's, I'm sorry. Of our active students, you'll see those numbers there also. 1% in marketable skills, which are welding, truck drivers, etc. 19% in certificate programs, 71% associates, and 8% in bachelor degrees. degrees. Um, I would just add the reason that we were able to serve and exceed the benchmark um, called for by the county is that we were able to bring in a total of $209,708 from state funds, a veterans grant that we received, and some private foundations. So we're able to exceed that benchmark and serve more of your um, Hidalgo County residents. Helping people move from poverty to the middle class isn't easy, nor is it quick. But a sustained effort, and through partnerships like ours, we can help bridge that, that gap. And our hope is that the county will continue to support us as you have. Any questions? So thank you very much. Any questions? My, I'm going to have my office reach out to you just for a little more detail. Okay, yes. So thank you uh -huh. so much for the presentation. Well, for the services that you provide are very, very important for our area. As everyone knows, according to statistics, 38% of all children enrolled in our public schools come from homes where they're poverty, uh, they, they are technically in poverty. So we thank you very much for your service. Thank you. Does thank this you require any, any action? No, no, it's personal no action. Okay. So, uh, thank you thank very you. much. Thank you, everyone. Item 6A. Good morning, Commissioner Judge Rosalinda Cantu, presenting for the District Attorney's Office. Item 6A, Domestic Violence Unit Grant Fund 1281. Number one is the approval to accept the Domestic Violence Unit Grant Fiscal Year 2018 from the Office of the Governor in the amount of $81,590.65, effective October 1st, 2019 through September 30th, 2020. And we're also asking for approval of the certification of revenues and the appropriation of the same. Move for approval. Second. Opposed in favor say aye. Aye. No one opposed. Motion carries. Item 6B, DA's Domestic Violence Specialty Prosecutor Grant, uh, Fund 1281. We're asking for approval to submit a DBSP grant number 2931305, budget adjustment, to the Office of the Governor. Move for approval. Mm -hmm. we have a motion to second. Those in favor say aye. Aye. No one opposed. Motion carries. Item 6E, Hidalgo County's Hidalgo County DA's Office uh, BPU Grant Fund 1281. We're asking for approval to submit a BPU grant number 2537809, budget adjustment to the Office of the Governor. Move for approval. Second. Opposed in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item 7A. Mm -hmm. Item 7A, Haida OCDEF Grant Fund 1291, approval of FY 2020. Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. Agreement between the Hidalgo County DA's Haida Task Force and the Drug Enforcement Administration, McAllen District Office, Houston Division Office, OCDEF, Strike Force Group D81. We're also asking for approval of the certification of revenues um, and the appropriation of the same. Move for approval. Second. And this is is this item one and two? One and two. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed. Motion carried. B, 6B, sorry, 7B, Haida OCDEF on 1291. Number one, we're asking for the, number one and number two, one, two, and three, we're asking for approval of the FY 2020 overtime grant. And the, that will, between the, uh, Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force and the Hidalgo County DA's Haida Task Force in the amount of $16,005. We're also asking for authorization to pay overtime reimbursable under the grant terms and conditions, as well as the approval of the certification of revenues and the appropriation of the same. Move for approval. Second. Again, this would be approval of one, two, and three. Seven. Is that correct? Yes, seven B, seven one, B. two, three. 
Okay. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed. The motion carries. Item 7C, um, HIDA Federal Sharing Fund 1252. We're asking for authorization and approval to reduce the appropriation in the amount of $29,435.26. Okay, come up for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed. The motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Adult probation number 8A. Judge, commissioners, with your permission, I'll present for adult probation. Mr. Patrick is out of the training. Uh, for the adult probation, this is their 1289 fund domestic violence grant. They're asking approval to accept the domestic violence grant from the governor, I mean, from the office of the governor, criminal justice division, the amount of $143,481.04. This is for the period of October 1st, 2019 through September 30th of 2020. For approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Second action item would be the certification of revenues as approved by the county auditor's office for the domestic violence court grant in the amount of $143,481.04 and appropriation of same. Move. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Item 9A, Sheriff's Office. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Commissioners. Captain David Friedman with the Sheriff's Office. Uh, under 9A, 72552, uh, 2018 Operation Stone Garden, authoriza uh, requesting authorization and approval to submit a budget amendment or FRAG and Price Act waiver in reference to Operation Stone Garden 2018. Move for approval. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 So anyone opposed? Motion carries. 9B, Organized uh, Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force. Requesting approval to continue the payment of overtime for one employee currently being paid by the OCDEF grant pending the award of the 2019 2020 grant. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. Under 9C, Sheriff's Office OCDEF uh, 1284. Uh, number one, requesting approval of the fiscal year 2020 Organized Crime Drug Enforcement Task Force agreement between the Hidalgo County Sheriff's Office and the Drug Enforcement Administration, uh, McAllen District Office, Houston Division, Office of Def Strike Force Group D81. Number two, uh, requesting approval of certification of revenues as certified by the County Auditor for the fiscal year 2020 OCDEF grant agreement in the amount of $13,800 and appropriation of the same in ref uh, reference to the investigation number. SW uh, TXS 1140. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion for approval of item C1 and 2. 1 and 2. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carried. Um, under 9D, uh, Sheriff's Office uh, FBI 1284. Number one, requesting approval to accept overtime funding agreement from the Federal Bureau of Investigation for fiscal year 2020 in the amount of $37,298. Number two, requesting authorization to pay overtime reimbursable under the grant terms and conditions. And number three, requesting approval of certification of revenues as certified by the county auditor for the fiscal year 2020 FBI overtime agreement in the amount of $37,298 in appropriation of same. Move for approval 9B, 1, 2, and 3. Second. Those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. 9E. Uh, Sheriff's Department ICE overtime. Uh, number one, requesting approval to accept overtime funding from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, fiscal year 2020, in the amount of $15,000 per officer. Number two, requesting authorization to pay overtime reimbursable under the grant terms and conditions. And number three, approval of, uh, requesting approval of certification of revenues as certified by county auditor for ICE overtime funding in the amount of $45,000 and appropriation of the same. Move for approval. E1, 2, and 3. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Under 9F, uh, pursuant to the Hidalgo County Cellular Telephone Policy, uh, the AT&T DIR TDO 3420 presentation for consideration, acceptance, and approval of cellular phone request form Data Connect Government for the following. Approval of requisition 399126 for three unlimited data lines for Skycop at $37 each and 12 gold static IP for $3 each. Move for approval. Second. 
Those in favor say aye. Aye. If anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Item 10A, Constable Precinct 5. Judge, commissioners, with your permission, uh, for Constable Precinct 5, uh, they're requesting consideration approval to appoint Mr. Eduardo Avitia as a reserve deputy constable by Constable Daniel Marichalar, Constable Precinct 5, in accordance with Texas Local Government Code 86.012. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Judge Commissioners, with your permission, I'll move on to 11A Executive Office. Uh, for today, 11A, 1 and 2, there is no action. Uh, 11B, uh, there is a request by Region 1 Education Service Center for the use of the Hidalgo County Courthouse for their 2019 mock trial competition to be held on Saturday, January, January 18, 2020. Uh, this is, I'm sorry? 2020. Oh, I'm sorry, courthouse for the 2019 mock trial to be held Saturday, January 18th of 2020. This is an annual event. That 2020. 2020 mock trial. Yes, 2020 mock trial. Move, Move for, for approval. Second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 One opposed, motion carries. Thank you. Um, uh, let, let me uh, just for two seconds move on to uh, item uh, uh, D. We have uh, approval of resolution nominating candidates for the Hidalgo County Appraisal District Board of Directors for 2020 through 2021. This is the first step, uh, which is nomination, and then uh, later on this year will be the actual uh, votes uh, for the uh, nominees. I would like to nominate Eddie Bedencourt from Mission, Texas. Okay. Do we do one at a time? Yes, sir. Uh, second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Everyone opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Commissioner? I'd like to nominate Joel Levadis mm -hmm. from West Okay. Second. All oh, carried. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Aye. Everyone opposed? Yeah. Motion carries. Okay. Commissioner? Me? Uh, I'm good with the applicants, okay. with, the, with the names being said. Yeah. What's your name? Uh, Amador Kenneth. Uh, okay. Second. We have a motion and a second for Amador Rikenis. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Um, I, the parties have already been nominated. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. So with that being said, we will uh, uh, turn in all the uh, proper uh, documentation to the appraisal district. Um, item E, uh, I'm asking the court to accept the settlement check uh, from Texas Mun Municipal League in the amount of $1,965. This will settle property damage uh, to the detention facility wall at our sheriff's office. <coughs> so moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Second action item uh, would be authorizing myself, the executive officer, to sign property damage release form to settle property damage claim with Texas Municipal League. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. And item F, Judge Commissioners, I'm asking discussion consideration approval to execute the notifier password agreement with authority for Valdega Executive Officer to sign documents. Uh, the, the document in question here is a form that needs to be submitted uh, to, um, uh, to our, fire, our, our provider for uh, fire services. Uh, in this building, we have a, uh, we have a, a unit uh, on the <coughs> east side that has a pass password that needs to be reset uh, to essentially zero so that we can add a new uh, password. Uh, that will give us the ability to do further programming on it. So this is the process to be taken. Move for approval. Second. I, I was reading uh, the, the documents, and it, it tells us in a lot of, a lot of words you know, to, to be careful because the warranty will be void. Right. If anything happens, exactly. so and we are be very, be yes, very careful. We are working with our fire marshal's office to make sure that we are in compliance with all fire code regulations. Okay. Just be careful with that. Yes, I have a motion to approve. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Judge Commissioners, we will go back on, uh, to item 11C. Um, for the record, we do have 10 participants uh, that have signed uh, public participation forms. Uh, while they are all uh, they are all individual with respect to them wanting to come to the podium and speak on the item. They are all related as they all want to speak on the very same topic. Uh, so, again, there is a two-minute time limit per participant. 
Uh, and so the uh, um, item 11C1 is discussion, consideration, and action to approve the continued receipt a share of bingo prize fee funds collected in Hidalgo County for any cash bingo prizes greater than $5 pursuant to the requirements of Texas Occupation Code 2001.502 and House Bill 914 enacted by the 86th uh, Texas Legislature. So with that being said, uh, I'm going to ask uh, the individuals in the audience uh, one at a time. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Bunkley who would like to speak on the matter. Hello, thank you commissioners for allowing us to participate. Um, I'll give you a little background on this issue. In the last legislative session, charities across the state worked very hard to pass House Bill 914, which would allow a certain portion of the prize fees that charities conducting bingo pay to expire. Um, the bill passed with overwhelming bipartisan support statewide, including all five representatives and both senators that cover Hidalgo County. Um, to effect this change and give the money back to the local charities that work so hard to earn it, um, the commissioners have to uh, not vote to uh, continue this tax or hold a vote to not tax the charities. So we've started a petition and we sent it to each of you. I believe you have a hard copy and also an electronic copy. We've got 255 signatures from charity representatives, members, as well as citizens of Hidalgo County. Um, again, we're asking not for a handout, we're asking for the charities that work very hard to earn this revenue to keep a little bit more of it. A lot of the charities in this room are volunteering their time at 2 a.m. Friday and Saturday night selling bingo cards to fund their worthy causes. Um, should you allow this tax to expire or vote to discontinue it, there's over 50 charities in Hidalgo County that would benefit there's American Legions, VFWs, Boys and Girls Club, Children's Advocacy Center, uh, Lions Clubs, Knights of Columbus, Make-A-Wish Foundation, the Cancer Foundation of the Valley, Habitat for Humanity, the Palm Valley Animal Center. So a lot of good local charities. And they fill a need in the county that they would otherwise be here asking for a handout. A lot of these charities can administer these funds in a more efficient manner than the county can because they are administered by volunteers. So again, we're asking that the court today either allow this tax to expire by taking no action or voting to discontinue it and putting hands, money back in the hands of these Hidalgo County okay. charities. Two minutes over. Thank you. Next presenter is Mr. Ryan, and I apologize, Mr. Buckley, but uh, when there is one minute left of the two minutes, I will, I, I will advise that there's a minute left, okay? So my apologies. Oh, sure. Okay, uh, Mr. Ryan? Judge, commissioners, thank you for letting me talk today. <clears throat> I'm here representing the American Legion Post 37 in McAllen. Uh, we are a veterans organization. Uh, we serve veterans. We serve the community. And the monies that we earn from this uh, charitable bingo go to all of our, our programs through uh, national security, through Americanism. We do school programs. And, of course, our main issue is uh, helping veterans and their families in the valley and, and, and throughout. And uh, we would, uh, I would like to ask your support in discontinuing this tax so we can keep up the, uh, the work that we do in, in this area and throughout the, throughout the state of Texas. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next presenter is Ms. Johnson. Good morning, Judge Cortez, commissioners. By way of introduction, my name is Holly Johnston. I'm the executive director at the Valley Nature Center in Westlaco. I live here in McAllen, but I do work in Westlaco, and I get to see firsthand how amazing the work is of the charities that are in this room. Our charity, the Valley Nature Center, serves to educate children about the flora and fauna of the Rio Grande Valley. We see about 8,000 school children a year. We specialize in special needs such as autism, Down syndrome, children with juvenile diabetes. We'd like to expand those programs. And the legislature gave you the power to make that possible. And we could expand to our further communities and to your constituents to make this an even greater place than the Valley already is. 
So I'm here asking you to please discontinue this tax and be the heroes that we need you to be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next presenter is Mr. Milam. Judge, commissioners, I'm here on behalf of the Mission Lions Club, and I just want to kind of give, go over with a brief example of what things the Mission Lions Club does for citizens of Mission and, of course, Hidalgo County. Uh, one, of, Our biggest item is eyeglasses and exams for students in the Mission area, and that's about, uh, we spend about $20,000 a year on eyeglasses and exams. Uh, Texas Lions Camp. We build wheelchair ramps for disabled people, diabetes awareness, vision. We just got done uh, screening 2,000 students in the Mission School District, kindergarten and pre-K for vision screening. We also sponsor uh, Boy Scout Troops 83 and 84 and their various uh, entities, the Mission Food Pantry, uh, Leo Clubs, which are high school, uh, like Lions Club for high schools, and uh, this is what, how we're serving, just a small example, and what we can do uh, with this, if you allow this tax to expire. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Ms. Vela. Judge, Commissioner Courts, thank you for allowing me to be here. I've been a member of the La Jolla Alliance Club for 19 years. And we say La Jolla, but we cover Sullivan, Los Sevenos, Peñitas, and Abram. And I just helped to organize a club in Palmview so that they can give us some help. We have installed trash cans in Los Sevenos and in Peñitas. And these people that I meet from those communities, they come over and they tell us how neat now the cemeteries look. And of course, my parents are in Los Sevenos, and I see that myself. We're in the process of doing it in Sullivan City and in Abram, doing the same thing so that uh, these areas are kept since they don't, they're not in the city, they don't have anybody, only volunteers to clean up the, their cemeteries. We also help with the eyeglasses in our school. We, we have a, uh, a District 2A3 coordinator that comes to the schools and they visit all the schools so that these kids will be prepared when they get the testing from the states and that they, they will pass those exams. They are, set, they are given a voucher, they go to Family Vision, then they send us a bill. Each student is $90. So we spend almost 20,000 on those kids so that they can excel in their exams, okay? And of course, we have scholarship that we give to our kids in our district so they continue their education. We have three high schools that have Leo clubs. And these Leo clubs will replace us, do service in our community when we are not around. And let me tell you, each school has over 50 kids in, enrolled in the Leo club. And these are kids from nine to 12. So they can continue doing our service to the community. Thank you. Thank you. The presenter is Mr. Trevino. Good morning, Judge, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Official Capacity Pizzas to Governor Joe Trevino from the Lions Club. <clears throat> As you can hear from, uh, you already heard from other Lions Clubs, we all are sort of in the same boat. Uh, we do service our models we serve. Uh, besides of what they had mentioned, uh, we also help out during the disaster uh, during the county. Uh, we have a, a way where we can leverage our money to make it uh, worth a lot more. So any little bit or a small amount that you can help us with, we'll make it go a long way. We just ask you to help us. Uh, we're a hardworking uh, group and with no pay. Good thing I'm retired and I'm able to do a lot of free work, but uh, anyway, it's still work to be done. So help us out and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Next presenter is Ms. Ochoa. Good 
morning, everyone. Um, thank you for allowing us to speak today. My name is Nadia Ochoa. I'm the executive director for Palmer Drug Abuse Program. Um, we serve the entire county, and um, I just really would like to thank you all for having us here and considering this motion. Um, we provide free substance abuse to anyone in need, and we start at age 12. So as you can imagine, our services um, are in great need if we have to stay start that young. So please, uh, we ask for your support, we ask for your help, so we can continue to provide our services. Since all our services are free, all the financial support, especially through Bingo, makes a huge difference um, in our budget. So please um, take it into consideration and, and let it expire. Thank you all. Thank you. And let me start off by apologizing uh, very, uh, before I mention I think it's, uh, and I can't make out the first name, so I'll just say the last name. I believe it's Guerra or? Guerrero. Guerrero. My apologies. Thank you. My apologies, Mr. Guerrero. Uh -huh. Commissioners, this is one where you vote no. Okay. I represent, as a past president of the Rio Grande Valley Sports Hall of Fame, an organization, we are the stewards of the Valley Legends in Sports. We've got approximately over 225 athletes that ran the fields here in the Valley in our Sports Hall of Fame. For 18 years, I've been on the Board of Directors, and we've, we've had challenges raising money for our banquet, which is second to none in the Valley. Since we've been uh, involved with Bingo, last year we presented 16 athletes, nine women athletes and eight men athletes in the Valley from Brownsville to Roma with $500 scholarships. It was a tremendous effort. And we can go out and get uh, monies from different contributors, but when, I, when I'm at the bingos, I see everybody buying cards, and those are the contributors to our organization. So I ask you humbly to vote no on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Next presenter is Ms. Waters. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Esther Waters, and I'm the past regent of the Catholic Daughters of the Americas uh, Court, Queen of the Rosary, number 2368 from Our Lady of Sorrows Catholic Church in McAllen. Our court consists of three parishes, Sacred Heart Catholic Church downtown, Our Lady of Perpetual Help on 23rd in Kendallwood, and Our Lady of Sorrows. And our organization's main uh, goal with the bingo distribution is scholarships. And right now, as, as we speak, we are allowed to give three scholarships, and we try to bring it down to one scholarship per parish to honor the students. Uh, it would be nice and a blessing if we could double our scholarships and maybe allowed to get two students from each parish uh, a scholarship. So I am here to ask you to please to vote to discontinue this price debt. Thank you. Thank you. Judge Commissioners, our last presenter is Ms. McClarity. Yeah, my question today, and sitting here and listening, I thought these people were coming just to there's some money, they were going to grab it. And I understand that these people are the ones that are doing the bingo games. So um, my thing is, how much uh, are, the, are you collecting, and how much... Um, and why are we collecting it? If these people are doing the bingo games for their own organizations, then they should get to keep it. How many of y'all show up to, to work these? I've never been to one, so I don't know. Um, so if they're doing the work, then I'm sorry. I've changed my thoughts. I thought they were money trying to grab. If they're collecting it, doing the work, they should get the money. Because what does the county do with what you're collecting? What have you done that you're wanting to get this money? And are you just, uh, or is this just another tax that you're putting on the people that are trying to do good? So, like I said, sitting here listening, that these are the groups that's doing all the work. Now, if you're going to work, 
and, and with these organizations and get out there, then uh, we could look at it. So my thing is, I'm sorry, if they do the work, they get the money. Thank you. Thank you. We have no more participants with respect to the uh, agenda item 11C. Commissioner? Well, tell us about this. What, what do you know about that? Okay, with respect to the, uh, the, uh, the collection of the, uh, of the fees from bingo fee prizes, uh, the County of Hidalgo has been receiving uh, revenues uh, from this endeavor for quite some time. Uh, I've got the last, uh, since 24, I just did a quick search, uh, from 2014 to present, uh, 2014, uh, 453,000, and I'm going to round. Uh, 2015, 443,000, 2016, 444,000, 2017, 363,000. It'll vary from year to year. Uh, 2018, 366, 366,000, and the projected estimated revenue for this year uh, is $350,000. With that being said, the revenue is like any other revenue source that the County of Hidalgo uh, collects or is authorized to collect or, or to receive, and those monies are used uh, for the operation of Hidalgo County. So with that being said, this, this year's estimated collection of $350,000 uh, was uh, incorporated uh, in our, our 2020 budget process. And uh, we adopted a budget uh, last month, and uh, within those projected revenues were these was this amount uh, for next year's operational uh, monies. I don't remember this coming up as a discussion item, though. I no, mean, I, I no. don't remember that we were presented an option as to whether we adopt a budget without it, uh, because we would have to decide that this year. Right. No, because uh, uh, this was something that was enacted by through the legislature, and we it received just came words up recently. Right. It came up. We received word through correspondence. So we had already. After our budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It just came up. So. So this 360 is part of our budget. Right. And as part, of our, as part of our budget, just for full, full information, right? Because I know that we've been working on it just lately. Because we just were made aware of this recently. But we received, so we plan to receive 360000 in 2020. With a 360, we give $2 million, uh, 460000 to the South Texas Museum that was here earlier, 240000 to the library system, 75000 to the e-library, 50000 to Estrella House. So we're giving out $2 million. We may collect 360, but we give out $2 million. Plus, we also give about 450 to 460 out of from our CDBG budgets that we can give to some of the charities that are here that we are already giving to some of the charities listed in the bingo list. And we've always invited, at least at Precinct 2, we've always invited people to, to apply for CDB, CDBG money that we have. Um, so it's not necessarily that, that you know, we're voting against somebody to collect their money. We also have a lot of money that we give out on a yearly basis. We're giving out $3.8 million. If we were receiving 360 and not giving out, more than 360, I would say it's, it's really difficult to, to continue. But if it's the wishes of the board to, to not collect it, then we're starting our, our budget at, at negative 360. Um, so it's just, I'm just trying to put all the information out there because um, sometimes we're not able to do that in, in a timely fashion. And uh, commissioners, uh, just for, uh, for clarification, uh, when I said that this came up uh, towards the end, yes, it did. Uh, my office didn't receive anything. It was uh, August 29th. It was at the end of August, and uh, we had already uh, hashed out a lot of the budgetary issues uh, for adoption, which was September 24th, uh, 24th or 5th. I can't remember the, the, the actual date, uh, but as if you recall, uh, during the discussion, the issue at hand was the, uh, the uh, tax rate. Uh, so... Yeah, but that, that was a month uh, between the time you were notified to the time that we approved the budget. I at least would have liked to have known that, you know, as we approved a tax rate and revenues that we anticipated. I'm, I guess I'm more in favor of, of letting the charities use the money the way they have in the past and allowing them to do more. I know a lot of the charities that came up here today, I, I know that I don't see on my CDBG list. Uh, and I know that the ones that we commit to are already are, you know, like Valley Metro and... Mujeres Unidas, like I, there's already, for me, there's already a set group of people that receive some of this money. 
And to me, I know like the Valley Nature Center there in Westaco is a real critical part of not just our community, but the outreach for children and the education with respect to nature and all the other things that our community um, prospers in. Uh, so for me, you know, I, I guess I'm more in favor of allowing the charities to continue the work that they've been doing. It impacts all of our areas. It serves a lot of the communities that, all the communities that we serve. So it, at least in my opinion, I, I understand the argument of we, we do give a lot of money out. But in, in, in from what I see in the charities that are listed here, they can do a, a lot more good uh, by by doing it and using it the way they have been using it. it. If it were people that had never been here before, or people that hadn't done this type of work and it was a startup type of charity, then maybe I would have a little bit more reservation, but I've seen a lot of the good work that they do and a lot of the, the, the worthy causes that they support, uh, whether it's scholarships, education, uh, community service, all of those are good things to me. So for me, it's a small price to pay to allow them to continue to do that work. Second. I don't think it's. Well, it wasn't a motion. It was more a discussion. But before you take action, um, as a matter of clarification, the county received communication from the lottery commission last week, um, which made it was intended to clarify that there was some ambiguity in the way the statute was written and the way uh, House Bill 914 was written, and because of that, the lottery commission is recommending that you take action to continue collecting your share of the fees prior to November 1st and then after that time if you choose to discontinue that collection and have that money go to the charities then you take additional action after November 1st so that's the recommendation of the lottery commission I don't understand why because of the way the statute was written and the statute put in a deadline of October 31st what do we take no action so if you take no action According to the Lottery Commission, you cannot be certain that that money will go to the charities you intend. However, if you take action, wow. yeah. <laughs> Talk about money in the so if no you sense. take action today to continue to collect those fees, it has to be done by November 1st and inform the Lottery Commission of that action. Then after November 1st, the court can decide one way or the other if you want to continue to keep the collection or allow it to go to the charity. I think there's a point of clarification. Uh, and this is because of the language? The way the statute was written. Statute. Right. Right. Thank you very much for allowing me to come back up and address this. I did email each of the commissioners a letter of clarification from the bill sponsor, Sinfronia Thompson. The, the ambiguity comes into whether or not the charities get all of the money if the city and the counties do not take mere actions. So for the charities in this room, the, the city that they conduct bingo in is McAllen. McAllen does not currently receive fees, so McAllen is not eligible to receive those fees going forward. For you guys, if you vote to discontinue this tax, this money goes right back to the charities. The ambiguity is, uh, say in a city like um, Mission, if Mission took no action and the county took an action, then the county, uh, arguably, by the Lottery Commission's interpretation, could get all of the money. That's not how the bill sponsor intended it. The bill sponsor intended that, uh, and she clarified that in her letter, the county would have to take an action to get their portion, the city would have to take an action to get their portion. So the ambiguity is whether or not all of the money goes back to the charities or half of it goes back to the charities and half of it goes to the city. So it is confusing to be sure. Well, the easiest thing is we're early in the month, so we could take no action for now because that seems like we do have, have another right. meeting Before that we meeting could, could do and so we'll have some right. clarification by then but right now I, I think we just leave it alone do you table or you take no action what do you we do take no action take no action is that your recommendation if you're going to follow the recommendation of the lottery commission then I recommend you take action prior to November 1st either way to well, ensure but that but the you're going to have two comes. weeks to to get some more clarification right. on that. right we have I'm sorry. I'd, I'd like to just verify that you know, the representation that he's making with respect to what the ambiguity is, and if we can get that clarification, right. then we can make a better decision. And the Lottery Commission did attach uh, Senator Thompson's letter but to their sure communication. So we yes. would just buy, but I sent buy two more weeks. Right. So, right, because we will be having Commissioner's oh, Court. I didn't see it. I'm sorry. We have a scheduled Commissioner's Court, not next week, the 15th, but the 22nd, and we should by then have the clarification that Ms. Josie is talking about. I think we all appreciate and value the services that you guys provide our community and the people that you serve. 
there's no disputing that. I think that we just need to verify from our standpoint, one, the budget, budgetary impact, which we know is more or less 350, and then really this ambiguity that exists. But, I mean, we, we do appreciate everything that you guys do, and in no way would any action uh, maybe muddy those waters with respect to how, how much well, we value what you do. Well, by not taking action, that's, that's what they want. So. I, I understand. But, uh, Absolutely. Thank you all very much for your time. Awesome. Thank you. So, no so we'll go to 11D approve. No, we're oh, we're no we, we've done all that. Okay. So, uh, commissioners, just for, the we, yeah, we're yeah. So just for the record, then, uh, Ms. Monica, we'll have this very same action item scheduled uh, for the 22nd so that uh, we can uh, uh, make sure that we don't miss the, uh, the November 1st. Okay. Okay. Thank you all for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Laco, Human Resources. I couldn't see you behind the podium. Right. <laughs> Good morning, Judge Good morning. Commissioners. Those of you representing for Human Resources, uh, item A, uh, first we need a, a waiver of the budget amendment policy for personnel related amendments, if applicable, for personnel items that are listed. Move for approval. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> you can say. Okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, commissioners, item B relates to the uh, within step increase uh, annual uh, under the classification and compensation plan. We have, I'll call it a merit raise, the, the step increase uh, component uh, of, of the classification plan says that we will give uh, an increase uh, to employees under that meet certain criteria. Uh, it involves criteria, uh, conduct, uh, disciplinary actions, uh, time and step, uh, tenure criteria, and performance uh, we have, we have data on the first two criteria. We have determined the people who are uh, meet the first two eligibility uh, criteria. Uh, we, we need the performance, and we're going to do the performance evaluation during the month of uh, October and November. Uh, some time ago, a few weeks ago, I brought to court a, a, a one-page uh, summary evaluation form, and uh, it was deemed inadequate. Uh, I, I talked to the Civil Service Commission and, and they, uh, we discussed uh, uh, the pilot uh, uh, program forms that we're testing. We're testing evaluation forms uh, that, that, that categorize uh, employees and they're uh, more uh, objective than, than subjective. Uh, the, the commission approved us to use those forms for this year's uh, evaluation, uh, and the court had not approved them yet, but, but I recommend that we do that. So we're asking that we rescind the action that we took on August 20th to use a one-page form, and then in, in lieu of that, to use the, the pilot project forms, uh, which is uh, a, a more comprehensive uh, evaluation instrument. So uh, that's the background on B. So I'm asking, uh, one, approval to rescind the action uh, on, uh, the, regarding the employee performance form that we took on 8-2019. And two, discussion consideration approval to use the performance review and evaluation forms for the within step increase process as per section 8.04 of the classification compensation. Mr. Sayano, how, how, long, how long is it, the evaluation? Uh, we, we have it by categories. We're testing it in precinct four. We started in uh, July, more or less, and, and HR. Uh, and it involves, in the pilot project, it involves the, uh, the, the, the commissioner staff uh, and their supervisory staff will evaluate the employees like it's a six-month project. They would evaluate, uh, a, a, they'll do a review after three months uh, using uh, the uh, supervisor's uh, uh, judgment, using any work-related reports that, that relate to the employee's uh, job, and, and then uh, at the end of the six months do uh, another review uh, to see if we need to change some of the performance tasks or some of the language. or uh, And then uh, we hope to come to uh, Commissioner's Court for uh, final approval sometime in January or February so that we can use these evaluation instruments countywide. Uh, there's four different tools, uh, evaluation documents. There's one for clerical administrative, uh, for the trades, for professionals, for technical. Probably, uh, but we're going to be able to use this this year for so that we can we, we would like permission from the court to use it 
in for the, the for the purpose increase. of the step increase plan. I understand, but you said we're going to use it next year. We're going to use it now, yes, this sir. year, for January 1st. Now, this year, for the purpose of the step increase plan. Right. It's been approved by, by the... Uh, it's been approved by the commission, yes, ma'am. Yes, civil service. Now, we did agree with the commission, uh, commissioner that we would go back after we make any changes uh, because of the test, that we would go back to them for... But, but they would agree that this would be a good instrument to use in the... Uh, in the performance evaluations for the step increase. So when do we start evaluating? We're going to start, I'm going to send a list to each department of the employees that need to be evaluated uh, this week. Okay. Questions? Well, what's your recommendation? I recommend that we use these forms for uh, for that purpose, Commissioner. Well, first we need to rescind. All right, first we rescind the uh, the one that we took back when in... 12B1 first. Yes, so on the way we... Yeah, for approved to rescind. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. I just wanted to actually, I was pointing to Ellie because yeah. okay, I know that she's in charge of the, the been, pilot, yes. been doing the pilot program. Correct. You're you're okay and recommend all of this? Yes. Yes. yes, sir. So 12B2? 12B2. 12B2. And 12B2 would be discussion consideration and approval to use the performance evaluation re evaluation forms for the within grid as per section eight, the one that we just handed out. Yes. Good. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you. Item item C for the uh, uh, criminal district attorney's office uh, approval of the following personnel actions effective upon commissioner's court approval. The uh, th these are uh, really a uh, classification correction. Uh, it's a it's a great. There's no change in salary. Uh, this this position should have been uh, classified as criminal investigators too when we implemented the plan. Uh, this was brought to our attention uh, by by the DA's office. Uh, so it, it just involves changing the title and the grade, uh, but no change in salary. There's no budgetary impact, so we recommend approval. Okay. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D, we're going to take no action. Mr. These Chairman, are, uh, just for I'm the sorry. record, I, I abstain from taking action on yes. this. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. On C? On C. I Commissioner C. Torres abstains. Thank you. Thank you. Item D, uh, we're going to take no action on that. This is a, a grant uh, that involves uh, uh, several calculations, and there are some errors in the calculations according to the budget office, uh, and so we will bring that uh, back next week. Uh, moving on to item E, uh, Justice of the Peace, Precinct 4, approval to create a temporary full-time position for 13 weeks beginning October 8 and ending 1231. Uh, the judge is asking for a temporary clerk uh, for that period of time. He's getting a, a substantial number of debt claims. These are essentially uh, credit card companies or people that buy uh, debt and they're dumping, uh, you know, a lot of in, in his office. Uh, these are essentially lawsuits against the people that, that, that owe that debt. And uh, it, it, they've gotten a, a substantial number, so they're getting kind of backlogged. So he's asking for temporary clerk for a three-month period or, and, and evaluated again in January, simply so you can file these uh, uh, these items on a timely basis. Uh, subject to funding, of course, uh, we have to work with, with the budget office on the funding, but uh, we recommend approval. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item F for the fire marshal. The fire marshal is asking approval of the following personnel action effective next full pay period. He's asking to delete a vacant deputy fire marshal position and in, in lieu of that, create two uh, fire investigator positions. Uh, there's no budgetary impact. The cost, uh, the, the fire marshal is finding that he's having difficulty getting certified peace officer uh, to be a deputy fire marshal. He, and, and so what he proposes to do Four is to have these two temporary, two part-time positions and use Hire people that already work for the city fire departments as investigators. Uh, on their days off, they work shifts uh, and are already trained and certified. So he f he feels that he could use them and hire them to work for him part time uh, with the same money as the position uh, uh, for the deputy fire marshal. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G relates to our sick leave pool. Uh, as you know, commissioners, we have a, a sick leave pool for people that, that face catastrophic uh, illnesses or, or injuries and they're uh, 
sick leave has, has expired. They have used up all their annual leave, annual sick leave. Uh, people, on, when they when they've uh, been employed with the county for 12 months, they're given the opportunity to join. They have to donate up to uh, some hours, some sick leave hours from the sick leave. Uh, and people that that are normally already in the pool donate on an annual basis. But, but because we have a a good balance, uh, we're asking approval to waive the contribution for those people that are already enrolled, not to have to donate again. Uh, so let me read the item. It says, approval to waive the 2020 contribution slash donation of sick leave hours to the sick leave pool for currently enrolled participants due to current level of sick leave pool hours. Employees not currently enrolled and who wish to enroll must contribute sick leave hours as per the sick leave policy. As of this month, we have uh, a balance of 294,000 uh, hours that have been contributed over the years. We use about 10,000 a year, so we have enough for 10, 30 years uh, so I, I recommend that, that we waive the contribution for this year again. We, we, we've been waiving it for the last few years. And move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. <laughs> Urban County. Otro Good morning, commissioners. P.R. Avila with Hidalgo County Urban County Program uh, for item 13A. We're requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under the Texas uh, Local Government Code 262.024A4 for professional engineering services. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> Item 13A2, uh, presentation of the scoring grid for the purpose of ranking by commissioner's court of at least three engineering firms from the county's approval as graded and evaluated by the city of Palmview, urban county program and Hidalgo County uh, purchasing department in connection with the funded through Hidalgo County urban county program year 31 city of Palmview street improvements project with professional service uh, firms ranked the highest with Hinojosa engineering with 92.33 R.E. Garcia with 86.33, and Fulcrum Consulting Services with 81.33. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number three, authority to negotiate engineering services with contract uh, with the number one firm of Hinojosa Engineering for the provision of engineering services for the Urban County Program Year 31 for the City of Palmview Street Improvements Project. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, Eddie Olivares, Dallas County Health and Human Services. I have a couple of items. Item 14B, approval of certification and revenue by county auditor for the program income earned in the amount of $446.75 from the perinatal FY19 program in appropriations of the same. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <coughs> Item C is approval certification of revenue by county auditor for program income earned in the amount of $100.93 $100 from the child health FY19 program in appropriations of the same. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item D is requesting approval to submit request to the grantor agency to amend contract number 537-1702870001. The purpose of the request is to realign funds between budget categories. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye motion carries. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Community service. Hi, honey. Good morning, Commissioners. Jaime Longoria with the Dago County Community Service Agency. Uh, item 15A is discussion and update regarding the 2020-2021 Texas Veterans Commission grant for Operation Bravo Zulu. Uh, Commissioner, with your permission, I'll go ahead and bring that back uh, okay. at our next uh, Commissioner's Court meeting. Just suffice to know uh, that we will be applying for, for that particular grant. Uh, we'll ask for, for authorization from you folks uh, at the next meeting. Uh, we anticipate uh, continuing Operation Bravo Zulu. We served well over 500 uh, veterans last year, and we anticipate to continue providing that service again for uh, the, the new fiscal year. So I'll bring that, that item back. Item 15B would be uh, discussion, consideration, and possible action to approve 
Fiscal Year 2019 Comprehensive Energy Assistance Program Amendment Number Two for Contract Number 58190002984 for Program Year 2019, with authorization for Jaime Longoria to sign any and all pertinent forms. Uh, this is a about $17,000 increase, actually $17,339 increase uh, for utility assistance. That would put us at six six million three hundred sixteen thousand three hundred and ninety five dollars for this year. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, commissioners. Uh, item C would be discussion, consideration, and possible action on amendment uh, to the fiscal year twenty nineteen community services block grant uh, contract number six one one seven zero 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 two six three six for program year twenty nineteen with authorization for Jaime Longoria to sign any and all pertinent documents. What this is is uh, two adjustments of, to this year's community services block grant. One would be uh, uh, kind of to move money uh, into salaries. We were made aware that uh, there's a small grant that the state of Texas would provide $17,500 to cover a salary. Uh, the state of Texas has kind of got into a little bit of a dispute with the feds on this, and uh, that money is not forthcoming in a timely way. So we need to be able to cover that, that FTE for us. Uh, the other one is the purchase of some equipment. Uh, I've announced publicly that we've purchased that uh, emergency trailer. So we're moved a, a little bit of money into an account to be able to, to purchase that, uh, that emergency trailer. That should be coming in. Uh, the RV? Uh, well, it's not an RV. It's, a, it's actually a pull-behind trailer that will allow us to serve about uh, four or five uh, families in this particular, in this particular unit. So uh, we felt that was a, a more prudent way to go, our, our advisory board did. So uh, this, is, this is a move of money within the, the actual grant, not any more money or any less money that we'll be receiving. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And the last item is item D, is approval of the following personnel action. Effective uh, upon commissioner's court approval is the creation of slot number 45. It's an executive assistant one at a salary of 43796 The creation of another eligibility worker, uh, eligibility worker two, a salary of 29801 29801 and the creation of another case study worker uh, at a salary of $32,115. We've been made aware, commissioners, uh, that uh, the state intends to increase our, uh, our allocation, and actually the federal government is looking to allocate uh, more funding to, to uh, the utility assistance program nationwide. And as a result, we've been asked by, the, by our funder to, to begin the process of ramping up our staffing to be able to, uh, to provide services, uh, more services. Uh, we've had some preliminary discussions with uh, Precinct uh, 1 and uh, Commissioner Fuentes' staff about possibly housing uh, a satellite in Precinct 1, and we're looking at uh, having that same discussion in Precinct 3. Uh, we've always had a place in Precinct 3 at, the, at that annex building, so we're looking at ramping up staffing little by little to be ready for that, uh, that new allocation. Move for approval. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Commissioners. Keep up the good work, Mr. Longoria. Thank you, sir. Hey, Mr. Longoria. Yes, sir. Sorry. Uh, if you could talk about some of the services, not, not now when there's an agenda item, but some of the ser services you provide that are similar to VIDA. I think a lot of the people don't know what else we do besides electric, uh, electric assistance. Absolutely. One of the things that, that we're working on is, is, is completing an annual report and providing just, uh, you know, some of the... Uh, some of the other kinds of services that we provide in the community. Absolutely, Commissioner, we'll, we'll, we'll bring that back. We'll put something on the agenda next time. So okay, we we'll have it ready. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Elections. <laughs> Madam President. What is being handed out is, again, just the schedule for this November 5th, 2019 uniform election day. Yesterday was the last day to register or make changes to be able to participate in this election. And we certainly did have a good turnout at the office. We were always at one of the, we were also at one of the TV stations answering calls and, and having the public come. So it was a, it was a great day. Uh, the second page is, of course, the primary election short calendar. Just so that uh, you know and the community knows, the first day to file for a place on that primary ballot is Saturday, November 9th with the deadline being Monday, December 9th, so that will come upon us quite quickly. Uh, the last day to register to vote for that primary election is Monday, February 3rd. Uh, the last page are just the five city elections that are taking place during this November 5th election for your information in case anyone uh, needs to, to know you have that information handy. 
So my first item is discussion, consideration, and approval of the following changes to the approved list of the early voting and election day polling locations for this constitutional election of November 5th, 2019. So I had already brought the early vote and election day, and in that uh, time frame, we have for early vote and election day, Church of Christ is not going to be lending us that uh, location, and on election day, uh, Monte Alto. So now we have reduced election day locations by two, so there will be 34, and by one on early vote, there will be 27. Those are plenty of locations. They're, uh, you know, strong locations. So this is a constitutional. We are well represented with the five city elections. But what I really need for you to be thinking about is the primary. Uh, as you well know, uh, the uh, county handles early vote and the chairs and the parties handle election day. But what we have really seen, uh, consistency, we carry the early vote uh, polling locations over to election day and so people are getting used to that consistency so these two locations if you find another uh, location that is well suited that is ADA compliant please let us know and help us find uh, those locations that can be utilized for that primary I do need a vote on number one a move rather move for the unit action on that move for approval second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. motion carries B is discussion, consideration, and approval to pay overtime hours for the November 5th, 2019 general election by Hidalgo County Elections Department permanent staff in accordance with Civil Service Commission rules. The election cycle begins September 16th, 2019 and ends November 15th, 2019 and runoff begins November 5th, 2019 and ends December 20th, 2019. Do you want me to read number two? Yes, please. As well. Uh, approval of 2019 interdepartmental transfer from countywide administration contingency to elections department to fund overtime and fringes expenses. Move for approval on 16A and time in B, 1, 2, 3. Move 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2 Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Veteran Service Office. Commissioners, good morning, good morning. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for having us this morning. Uh, again, I'm Felix Rodriguez, your veteran service officer. And uh, I want to thank you again for um, having this agenda item uh, for your consideration today. Uh, Mr. Guerra has been very helpful in, in assisting our department in bringing this to you. This is the first ever, the first time that we will be submitting a grant application to the Texas Veterans Commission General Assistance Grant for fiscal year 2020 and 2021. Now, what we propose to do with these monies is only to add to what the wonderful work that uh, Bravo Zulu, Jaime Longoria is doing already, something that's never been done before here in Hidalgo County. Um, and I suspect that it'll be something that um, it's not, hasn't been done in the state of Texas either, because we add another component to what's being done in other counties with this grant. Uh, what we propose to do with these monies is, if approved, of course, is that we will assist veterans in education, employment, and training. Another component that we will be adding to this is um, in the way of pro providing health care to veterans, relief from debt for health care provided to veterans. Uh, well, currently, we have the Doctors Hospital Renaissance that wants to partner uh, in, this, in, in this effort. Veterans, uh, as you well know, we have these urgent care, emergency care um, as, uh, facilities propping up all over the, the, the county and the state. Uh, we have South Texas Health Systems. We have DHR, uh, Emergency Urgent Care Centers. And I was a, um, a uh, guest of one of these urgent care centers this Saturday. Uh, I had about a flare-up of gout. I am a veteran that's 100% service connected, so I did, will not incur any debt, and neither will uh, any, any other agency or the county. If a veteran that is not service connected and incurs a debt, Doctors Hospital Renaissance will incur and pay for whatever expenses this veteran uh, will incur for having been provided at health care. And if there is a debt incurred by the veteran that 
and the veteran is to be billed by the Department of Veterans Affairs, this grant money will pay for that. The veteran will not pay a cent if this comes to fruition. Move approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Head start. Good morning. Morning. I'm here with one item, and that's um, to have uh, a uh, discussion and approval of a committee representative by each member of the court to serve on the policy council for one year, according to 45 CFR 1301.3 D3. So um, uh, there was a, a memo that was included in there, and so um, for uh, the judge, his uh, former representative, has already served five years, so he needs to name someone new. Um, Commissioner Fuentes has a representative that can serve more uh, time, and so I don't know if he wants to name the same person or name someone else. And then uh, Commissioner Eddie Cantu, his representative has served four years. She can serve one more. Um, Commissioner Flores, um, I believe he's uh, wanting to uh, name someone uh, to serve. The person that was there had served four years, and Ms. Torres, the person that uh, is serving, has only served the one year, or less than one year. So we need a uh, representative. Keeping, I'm keeping mine. I think it's Mona Parra, right? Yes. I, I too, am keeping mine. Okay. And did Mr. Chavez say that he wanted to continue? Yes. Okay, then okay. I'll keep him. Okay, so <laughs> everybody has named except the judge's office and I'll and that can be in the next agenda. Thank you all very much. We oh, do no, have uh, we just yes. need a motion. Move to approve oh, the names that were still second. We're just discussing. And, and as a point of a clarification, Commissioner uh the Shazo's mind uh program. We have we show uh one about it. The list from Jose, Jose Luis, Luis Trigo. Trigo. It's well, that's no, that doesn't show that he's going to continue. That shows who was there before. Yes. Oh, that's who all. was there before? Yes. Okay, yes. my apologies. Yeah, I just want to make sure that, that yeah. okay. So, no, Ms. that Ms. was Pines. there. But, but his recommendation Ms. is Pines. a okay. new one, and that's, that's acceptable. We have a motion and a second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We you do have a training. She, she, uh, she asked last year. Yes. Yes. Um, we have a training schedule for the 21st, uh, which is a Saturday. And um, you are invited. You'll get more formal uh, a notice on it um, or your representative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, T.J. Ardono with the Planning Department. Uh, the first item is preliminary approval with the variance request. San Marcos number 2 subdivision in Precinct 1 is a 47-lot subdivision in a flood zone X. Drains will be a storm sewer system and intensify winding the existing drain ditch. It's in the rural area of the county. Water will be provided by North Alamo Water Supply and septic tanks will be used. The estimated number of streetlights is 10 and three internal streets will be paved by the developer. Uh, the variance is to reduce the required offset from 125 down to 109 for the proposed Harry Street and uh, to the, for the proposed Harry Street to the north of Mount 19. We recommend approval. So moved. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. The next set, seven items are up for preliminary approval. Josefina subdivision in Precinct 1 is a one residential and one commercial lot subdivision in the flood zone C. Drainage is natural percolation and runoff onto Canton Roadside Ditch. It's in the rural area of the county. Water will be provided by North Alamo Water Supply and septic tanks will be used. We recommend approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next time, Orlando and Sonia Garcia subdivision in Precinct 3 is a two lot subdivision in a flood zone C. <clears throat> Drainage is natural percolation and runoff onto brush, brush line roadside ditch. It was approved by the City of Mission. Water will be provided by Sherland Water Supply Corporation and septic tanks will be used. We recommend approval. So approval. Second. All the favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, La Placita subdivision phase two in precinct one is a four lot subdivision in a flood zone X. Drainage is natural percolation and runoff onto Kennedy roadside ditch. It was approved by the City of Wessico. Water will be provided by North Alamo Water Supply Corporation, and septic tanks will be used. We recommend approval. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, Comarex number T two subdivision. T I'm sorry to interrupt. On some of these, uh, it shows lights, and some don't. 
Uh, the, the smaller, like two lot subdivisions that are already fronting a county road, we don't we don't do those, Commissioner. Um, uh, and again, I we haven't estimated on these preliminary ones, so we're not sure until we get the final design of how many it's going to be. But on some of these little one two lot subdivisions that are already fronting an existing road, we, we don't put those uh, three lights out. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Comad X number two subdivision in precinct three is a 22 lot subdivision in a flood zone X. Uh, drains will be storm sewer and detention by widening uh, the existing drain ditch. It's in the rural area of the county. Water is provided by Sherryland Water Supply Corporation and septic tanks will be used. The estimated number of streetlights is four. Uh, the developer will also be paving one internal street. We recommend approval. Move approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, La Plaza Norte subdivision phase three in precinct one. is a 37 lot subdivision in a flood, flood zone C. Where the drains will be storm sewer and detention by widening the existing drain ditch. It was approved by the city of Donna. Uh, water is provided by North Alamo Water Supply Corporation and septic tanks will be used. The estimated number of streetlights is six and three internal streets are to be paved by the developer. We recommend approval. So moved. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, Bon Viejo subdivision phase five in precinct one is a 42 lot subdivision in the flood zone C. Drainage of storm sewer and detention by widening the existing drain ditch it was approved by the city of Donna. Water is provided by North Alamo Water Supply and septic tanks will be used. The estimated number of street lights is nine and three internal streets are to be paved by the developer. We're recommending approval. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, Oso Grande Estate subdivision in Precinct 4 is a 99 lot subdivision in a flood zone X. Drainage will be storm sewer and detention by widening the existing drain ditch. It was approved by the City of Edinburgh. Water and sewer will be provided by the City of Edinburgh. The estimated number of streetlights is 12, and four internal streets will, are to be paved by the developer. We're recommending approval. I have, a, I have a question there. So here you have almost double the uh, amount of lots, and yet you don't have double the lights. Why is that? Are they smaller lots? It's, for example, there's another 99 lot subdivision. Yeah, I saw that. One's half acre lots, the other one's sanitary sewer. So it's more condensed, obviously, in the sanitary sewer. There's smaller lots, much smaller. So you have less street lights. In the half-acre lot subdivision, you've got almost three times the amount of street lights. Okay. So it's all depending on design, so the, the size, size of the, the lots. lots. Okay. okay. But there's adequate coverage. Yeah. There's adequate coverage. We always cover that with the utility company and, and with the uh, okay. engineer in our department. Okay. So second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the next two items are up for final approval. Fernando Gonzalez subdivision in Precinct 3 is a two-lot subdivision in a flood zone X. Uh, drainage is natural percolation and runoff onto a uh, Dolphin Roadside Ditch. It was approved by the City of Mission. Uh, water is provided by Awa Sud and septic tanks have been installed. We're recommending approval. So moved. Move. Rule. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, next item, La Reserva Phase 1A in Precinct 4 is a 99-lot subdivision in a flood zone C. Drainage is storm sewer and a newly constructed drainage ditch. It was approved by the City of Edinburgh. Water is provided by North Alamo Water Supply and septic tanks have been installed. Uh, the developer has installed 21 street lights and has also paved four internal streets. We're recommending approval. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the last two, items are, last two items are up for final approval with a financial guarantee. Texas Tower Estates subdivision in Precinct 4 is a five residential lot and two commercial lot. Subdivision in a flood zone B. Drainage is natural percolation and runoff onto Texas and Tower Roadside ditches. We recommend final approval with a financial guarantee in the amount of 7500 for lots 1 and 2 and 5 through 7 for septic tank systems. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, the last item is Las Palmas del, Nor del Norte subdivision number 3, phase 2 in precinct 3. 43 lot subdivision in a flood zone X. The drainage will be a storm sewer system and detention by widening the existing drain ditch. It was approved by the City of Mission. Water is provided by Sherilyn Water Supply Corporation, and, and the septic tanks will be escrowed. The developer has installed eight street lights and paved six internal streets. Uh, we recommend final approval with a financial guarantee in the amount of 64500 for 43 septic systems and 28050 uh, 28, for five fire hydrants. I'll second Move approval. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And the, the fire, they've already been installed, the hydrants. They just didn't make the agenda, they, so they put up the money as a bond to, yeah. to secure it. But they're already installed. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Precinct 1. 
Barbecue. What conclusion is that? Precinct 120B, <laughs> authorization <laughs> approval to clarify and name a county road as Noreen Drive for 911 purposes from Monte Cristo Road to Mile 20 North and Mile 21 North to Charles Green Road. Motion approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. 20C, discussion and possible action to, to execute the local public agency standard utility agreement for the Mile 6 West project with North Alamo Water Supply contingent on receipt of text that Concurrence letter prior to execution by county judge and for the record pending legal approval. So approval. Second. All the favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Precinct four. Oh, we did that. Sorry. How about C? Here she comes. Take your time. Okay, item uh, Belinda Reyes, uh, Precinct 4. Item C, A172665, approval of advanced funding agreement between Hidalgo County and the Texas Department of Transportation for FM222 uh, uh, project, road project from FM1925 to uh, State Highway 107. CSJ 20940103 and approval of order authorizing the county judge to sign the AFA for said project. Mm. Approval. Second. All Just for clarification, that's FM 2220. 2220, yeah. Yes. Not 222. All, the, all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item is A172606, approval of advanced funding agreement between Hidalgo County and the Texas Department of Transportation for the FM 2220 road project from SH 107 to mile five, CJS 20940102, and approval of order authorizing the county judge to sign AFA for said project. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Requesting approval of interlocal agreement Oh, excuse me, A A172519, requesting approval of interlocal agreement between the City of McAllen and Hidalgo County as it relates to the road improvement project for FM 676, mile 5, or from Taylor Road to FM 2220 Ware Road with legals review and approval as to form attached. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Part 2 of AI 72519, in accordance with Texas Government Code Section 791.014, approval of proposed project whereby the City of McAllen and Hidalgo County desire to jointly undertake the road improvements project FM 676, Mile 5, from Taylor Road to FM 2220, Ware Road. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item AI 72518. Number one, requesting approval of interlocal agreement with Edinburgh CISD and Hidalgo County as it relates to the design and development of the Lynn San Manuel Veterans Park, uh, Brewster Park, located in Precinct 4 with legals review and approval as to form. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Part two of that, in accordance with Texas Government Code Section 791.014, Approval of proposed project whereby Edinburgh CISD and Hidalgo County desire to jointly undertake the design and development of the Lynn San Manuel Veterans Park, formerly known as Brewster Park, located in Precinct 4. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Budget and management. Yes. Commissioners, with your permission, I'll do uh, budget and management. Mr. Cruz was, is under the weather this morning. Uh, under budget and manager, it's uh, criminal DA 1100 and their uh, criminal justice division 1281 fund. It's approval of the following change in funding source actions effective October 1st, 2019 for the calendar year 2020. Uh, and we're taking department program uh, uh, from 080-002 to 080-022. And it's a criminal investigator two, grade 14, step one. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Purchasing. Here we go. Uh, 
23A1, action to impose and set the following deadlines for the submission of requisitions for goods and services and or services to order and receive prior to our fiscal and calendar years, uh, December 31st, 2019, for the general fund and all other applicable funding sources. Major purchases, as you see, is November the 8th. Day-to-day -day purchases, Wednesday, November 25th. Ms. Marty, I have a question. Can I? No. Sure. Um, how do you all plan to um, make sure that everyone is aware of these deadlines? We, right after this happens, uh -huh. we send notice immediately okay. to everyone in the letter that's attached, in the notice, in the order that it's an, in the form of an order okay. that's attached. There are uh, circumstances where if a department, for whatever reason, and it is a legitimate reason, can bring that exception to the court. But yes, we send, and then after every week, we send them a reminder. You only have three weeks. You only have two weeks. Okay, very good. We try very hard. Thank you. Thank you. Need an action? Yes. Yes, on Move one. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Two yeah. is approval of the exce exce exceptions to this order, which are A through D in the Sheriff's Office and Adult Detention Facility Food Purchases, Grant Special Revenues, and or capital projects funds and others as determined if if there is enough uh, information like from the budget office or the auditor that those are not included we will so for approval second all in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye motion carries item b is acceptance and approval to execute the final form of professional engineering's agreement with lng engineering for the on-call services for rio grande valley metropolitan planning organization Committee representation as approved for negotiation <laughs> back on uh, September 17th. Move Subject to legal review. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, B is acceptance and approval of work authorization one, monthly lump sum fee of $12,577.44. That is a correction for the record in the minutes, effective October 2019, as submitted by project engineer, LNG Engineering, for on call technical advisory representation for the RGV MTL. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item two is acceptance and approval to uh, execute amendment four between Hidalgo County and Architect HDR Architecture to include equitable adjustment to the HDR fee base on the increased construction cost value for the base building as per the contract with HDR for the lump sum of $101,671, and that is for the construction of the new Hidalgo County Courthouse project. Commissioners, and just for the record, we do have a public participation form. I did speak to Ms. Fern earlier. Did, did our conversation address? Okay. Well, so. it means that I was hoping that you would discuss that this is not added on to all no, the No, it's not. It's within the funds, and this is, this is again because of the of, of the changes that were made. Yes. Their percentage would be right. Okay. No, but I, you know, that's what we talked okay. about. Right. And that's yes. what I wanted. It will you not to exceed the. It will not exceed the total dollars. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Move uh, for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item three, acceptance and approval, to execute amendment one between Dallas County and Architect Wright Ogden Figueroa Alex Architects. To, a, to include additional services described in the document for the lump sum price of $11,000 for the Hidalgo County Services Facilities and Justice Center program. Some of the uh, observations have been complied with. If any have not, it is subject to those final compliances. Right. Commissioners, for the record, there was a public participation forum. Ms. Fern and I had a conversation. I suspect that you, thank you. Okay. Move for approval. approval. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item uh, 4A, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code 262, 024A4, a professional service. So moved. Again. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B, acceptance and approval of a better engagement with Jones, Galligan, and Key, and Lozano in connection with legal matters subject to legal review and compliance with all. Hidalgo County requirements, observations are my recommendation to to approve subject to compliance. Move approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 5A, requesting approval to declare items listed in Exhibit A attached here and seize vehicles and 
surplus for the purpose of sale through our auction scheduled for October 19th in accordance with Texas Local Government Code 263-152-A1. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B is requesting authority to publish publish advertisement for the auction of C's vehicles scheduled for 10-19-19. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Under C, uh, one, this is for precinct one requesting approval of work authorization one in the amount of $18,490 as it relates to professional engineering services for general management, coordination, and construction oversight for the Mile 6 West Road Structures Demolition Project for Precinct 1. And who will that be with, Marty? I couldn't tell from the... You know, I'm sorry. I don't. It's on the backup. Ms. Money, can you read it, please? I apologize, Commissioner. I don't know who the... I don't have the detail. Do you have Alpha, infrastru Alpha Infrastructure Engineering. Okay. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Mr. Governor. Item two, acceptance and approval supplemental one with work author two work authorization two for half and associates with an estimated amount of twenty thousand eight hundred eighty five dollars to the engineering and or architectural services required for the turnkey installation of the generator to precinct one admin building. And, and that includes JP one and right. two. That's because we're adding the JP. Exactly. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. D1 Precinct 2 acceptance and approval of AIA 133 form of agreement between Dow County Erickson Construction for the construction manager at risk for North San Juan Park swimming pool project. Authority for project manager B to C to issue and send formal notice to proceed that is subject to compliance with all outstanding documents that may not have been uh, received. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. On B, I'll just paraphrase, although it is explicit on the agenda. This is pursuant to Texas Local Government Code 262-031, and in the interest of expediting projects' progress, is to authorize Precinct 1 designee, Armando Garza Jr., to ex execute change orders that are less than $50,000. Precinct 2. Precinct 2. Oh, I'm for I'm for All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. E1, uh, Precinct 3. Requesting approval to purchase two 2020 International HVMD 6x4 with Davis dump body trucks through the county's uh, co-op participation and membership. And this is uh, through HGAC buy. This is uh, awarded vendor is Santex Truck Centers Limited. And it is in the amount of $225,500. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Two is requesting approval to purchase one 2020 AP 600F asphalt paver, also through uh, through our cooperative per membership and participation by board awarded vendor Holt Texas in the amount of three hundred ninety four thousand seven hundred seventy four dollars. Approval. Second. Congratulations. Uh, another another one. I all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. That's awesome. Let me just uh, Can we tell vote? you that that is also uh, <laughs> there is also an additional <laughs> fee. For the for the 60 month uh, warranty, that's included in the description of the of the agenda item. Item three: requesting approval to purchase one sweeper through the county's uh, participation with HGAC by cooperative purchasing programs vendor Texas Waste Equipment, Heil of Texas, through in the amount of two hundred thirty four thousand dollars. Move for approval. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Four is requesting approval to purchase curb sweeper. Through the co-op with HGAC programs uh, co awarded uh, vendor, that's Noises Power Equipment, and the total amount is $69,325. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 5 is acceptance and approval of work authorization 2 with an estimated cost of $2,775,700 estimated through Project Engineer LNG Consulting to provide engineering services for FM 676, mile 5, from so State Highway 107, Conway to Taylor Road. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. F, Precinct 4, F1, we are requesting approval of final negotiated contract. Uh, and I'm going to make a correction. There's two duplicates of the number 276. Please disregard one of them with SDI Engineering, LLC, as it relates to professional engineering services for the design and construction of phase, of phase services for the Lin San Manuel Veterans Park. 
Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. G1 is Hidalgo County, not Haida. As I told the judge, I'm going to ask for a Saunders fee on this one. This is discussion and approval of a division order as requested and required by Dubray Petroleum Corporation in connection with oil and gas lease number as stated on the agenda, including authority of the county judge or court member to execute any required documents. Once this is sent out, we have been placed on a suspended account basis. We will receive $140,000 in royalties. In that, in that royalties. wells that are in around the algo? I d didn't tell me where the location is. Right. On the lease. Move for approval. approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. This also thereafter establishes the amount that we'll be getting the monthly royalties yeah. instead. It, uh, also. Item H Health and Human Services Department approval to terminate and execute the disconnection form for the current agreement with Superior Alarms for the fire alarm system monitoring services. Uh, this is at 3105 East Richardson in Edinburgh. Move for approval. Second. In. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Budget and management requesting authority to advertise a request for information regarding solid waste collection and disposal in unincorporated, unincorporated areas of Hidalgo County. And commissioners, for the record, there is a uh, public participation form. I did talk to Ms. Fern. And with respect to the question, again, this is an informational uh, process we're taking. Uh, the scope of services within the informational process we're taking is uh, per precinct, countywide, designated service districts. They're going to be one on ones with those that are going to be uh, who uh, submit answering, an who answer submit, to the uh, RFI. So, and it's it's for the court to prepare and have all the information it'll need uh, to make a decision uh, down the road. And Thank uh, you. on an RFI, cost is not uh, it's right. not uh, explain, it's not requested at all. It's just information purposes. Okay. Is did you vote on that? No, no. not yet. Motion to approve. Again. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. J1 Colonia Access Program, Precinct 4, requesting okay. acceptance and approval, application for payment number two, retainage in the amount of 9,182.86, as submitted by Total Commitment Construction, awarded contractor for Green Valley Development, as certified by the project engineer, Quintanilla Headley and Associates. And commissioners, for the record, there is a public participation form. I did speak to Ms. Fern about this. Uh, Ms. Fern, uh, the, uh, in answer to the question, it's this is the third round from Border Colonia Access Program monies. The only local funds that, that were required so that we could finish out was $701, uh, and that's being provided uh, by Commissioner. Okay, thank you. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. In connection with that one, A and B, Certificate of Construction Completion, as submitted and recommended by the project engineer, Edley and Associates, and application B is an application for payment, which is the actual retainage for $9,182.86. Approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. K-1 approval of amendment work authorization 4 for the purposes of revising the fee schedule for the Idaho County bus barn in accordance with rates established by the original on-call engineering services agreement with engineer contract rates. Of approval. Second. Second. And I think that's all half an associate. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Approval of revised exhibit D cost proposal to reflect those Calculating using the correct fees. So move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, I, for the county clerk, L, acceptance and approval of final negotiated contract with CoFile Systems, rank number one for the RFP 187, title records management and document imaging process. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. M1 is countywide. Requesting authority to execute the 60-day grace period extension is provided in the current agreement with Delta Specialty Signs and Supplies for the purpose of traffic, road signs, and miscellaneous equipment. Motion approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. B is request to approve to reject the, the bids received for a countywide project uh, due to some modifications on the legal notices exhibits A and B. Motion so approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. NIT requesting uh, approval to enter into a 36-month term lease with Dell Marketing. The Redal County's participation with the DI or cooperative contract subject to legal uh, review and approval with the authority for the county judge to sign all required documents and those for the ones, the models and the amounts uh, posted on the agenda. Move for approval. Again. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. That's all I have. Thank you.
we do have open forum commissioners. Uh, we do have uh, various, but uh, and Ms. Fern McClarity. Uh, with respect to the various, uh, they were the individuals that spoke uh, earlier on the uh, bingo, so that's been uh, addressed. And uh, we have Ms. Fern McClarity. I'll please remind the audience to respect the speaker's time at the podium. There's a, a three-minute time limit. I will advise when there's one minute. Good morning, commissioners. I would like to again uh, compliment Judge Cortez, if he were here, for his article, We Must Reduce Poverty, that appeared in the Monitor. As I said before, I have never heard any politician say that elected official must become focused on earning the public's trust. This is an interesting statement because to the people, it seems that this commission is saying one thing and doing another. This commission has authorized the sale of about $200 million in bonds for the courthouse that most of us did not want. And then there uh, was the $190 million in drainage that was approved by the voters. To this process, the commission is going to continue a contract for delinquent tax service that could be easily taken care of by our Hidalgo County tax assessor collector that would uh, cost much less. And this commission will continue to support those appraisal district board members that have been there for many, 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 many years. All you have to do is to reduce poverty, is to reduce your spending. Just between the county and the city of Edinburgh, there will be a 21.5 cent uh, tax increase. Then there are the gro growing fees for services. If you uh, get a speeding ticket, you find out you're paying for the courthouse security. If you cannot pay illegal fees, then you find yourself accused of flaunting the law and involved with the, uh, with the scoff law. This law prohibits the issuing of vehicle permits, and it, with that, then they are any kind of uh, outstanding uh, debt that you have, you don't get your uh, vehicle permit. So guess what? They can't get to work legally, uh, and again, they'll probably get another ticket for driving their car. Is it true that the county is now, like I say, we're looking at the bingo winning. That, that surprised us that the county's been making money off of this for so many years. The letter in the budget report from the Hidalgo County Department of Budget Management says that the county's financial position has continued to improve because of the average annual net tax, uh, taxable property values growing of 5.2 over the last five years. Wish y'all would keep looking at that effective tax rate that's, that comes in every year also. In this last legislation session, the people were successful in reducing the maximum tax increase without an election from eight cents to 3.5 cents. And we also got the right to speak at public meetings. More than anything else, this says we do not trust you to make decisions for us. So if you are going to regain our trust you better hurry up because the laws can be changed every two years to help the public. Uh, again, uh, open forum, as you see, we're sitting here at the very end of the meeting in this freezer. So I do thank the uh, legislation for giving us our voice. Thank, thank you. you. We do have closed session, commissioners. As per Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, Sections 551, 071, 072, 074, we're going to go back to closed session. Move to approve. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We'll be back. Uh, under open session, well, under open session, 27A, real estate acquisition appropriations for same. No action to be taken today. Just proceed. It's directed. 27B, pending and or potential litigation. There's no action to be taken. 27C, E. EEOC charge 451-2019-03926. Deal phase uh, versus the County of Hidalgo. Uh, commissioners, for the record, uh, I'm asking uh, that this be facilitated by our district attorney's civil litigation, Ms. Josephine Ramirez's office. I could just have a vote for the, for the record. Move for approval. Again. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, 27D EEOC charge number 451-2017-00801 A. Antons versus the county. Uh, 
Uh, commissioners, I'd like to refer to item 26A and B. 26A, requesting exemption from competitive bidding requirements under Texas Local Government Code, Section 262-024A4, Professional Service for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation. I can have a motion. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. aye motion aye. carries. And 26B, engaging with the firm of uh, Preston Henriksen for the provision of legal services representation in connection with litigation and authority to submit a letter of engagement subject to compliance with House Bill 1295. And this is specific to open session 27D EEOC charge number 451-2017-00801A Antons versus County. Move for approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item 20, open session 27E EEOC charge number 451-2019-01463 Arlenese uh, versus County. Uh, commissioners, I'd uh, I'd like for the court to entertain a motion in settlement of uh, EEOC number 451-2019-01463 Arlenese versus County in the amount of $25,000. For approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Open session item 27F, duties evaluation of IT director. There's no action to be taken today. Item 27G, duties and evaluation of planning director. There is no action to be taken. I will state for the record for those two that uh, I'll proceed as director. Item 27H, claim of a commissioner. Eliud. Eliud. I'm sorry. Rivera. Uh, commissioners, I'd like settlement authority to make an offer in the amount of $568.88. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, there's no uh, action to be taken or on 28 and 29. And before adjournment, uh, uh, commissioners, our next commissioner's court uh, is October 22nd. That will be an afternoon session. So we have uh, drainage district at 1.30 and commissioner's court at 2 p.m. Again, October 22nd. There is no court uh, next week. We have adjournment. Again. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you all.